Right. Well, this is the book where I decided to, you know, not use any restraint in going after Israel because uh, uh, there's been so little done on what Israel has been doing in terms of espionage in the United States. So I knew there would be a lot of pushback because whenever anybody writes negatively about Israel, it's a, it's a problem with mainstream media and trying to, uh, and trying to get uh, published. But, you know, I have four bestsellers and uh, um, enormously good reviews. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to uh, worry about whether somebody's going to, uh, you know, uh, not like the fact that I'm writing about Israel. So, so a, lot of the, a lot of what I write about in this book deals with Israel since Israel has been spying in the United States for a long time. And it's been not only not written about, but uh, it hasn't been prosecuted. And that's uh, one of the problems. And that's the area that I was talking about in the Nation article where um, there's this very well-known uh, Hollywood producer, uh, Arnon Milshan. And he's the, uh, uh, well, he's basically one of the, the most well-known producers in Hollywood for a long time. He won two um, Best Picture Academy Award or uh, Oscar Awards, and he's got four billion dollars. Uh, a lot of the movies that come out uh, come out from his production company. But what never gets published uh, is the fact that his background. Uh, he started off with uh, Israeli intelligence, and then he became the arms dealer for apartheid Africa, uh, South Africa during apartheid. Uh, arming the uh, the racist government down there. Um, and then he became the propagandist for the apartheid government. And that's how he got into the United States, was propagandizing the apartheid government of South Africa uh, in U.S. Uh, uh, media and entertainment. Um, he's actually admitted all this stuff uh, on Israeli television. But what he, his main job was after, after he did that was to become Israel's principal uh, nuclear spy in the United States. So his job, um, so, he, you know, he's got two jobs here, basically. The overt job, which is being a producer, Hollywood producer, the covert job was uh, running a uh, Israeli front company that supplied Israel with a, a lot of the material it needed for its nuclear weapons, including um, almost a thousand Krytons. These are the sort of the blasting caps or the triggers for nuclear weapons, and Israel really wanted them. And they're illegal to be sent to any foreign country. So Israel needed a secret way of getting them, and he used, uh, they used uh, uh, Milchan to um, set up this front company and get a th almost a thousand of these uh, Krytons. <clears throat> the FBI finally discovered this was going on, and they arrested his front man, the guy that was running the, uh, the front company. Uh, an American, um, and he was facing 105 years in prison, and he escaped uh, uh, from the United States, and they didn't do anything from uh, on uh, to Milchan. Uh, Netanyahu at the time was the basically running the uh, the embassy in in Washington. He was, in, I think, the acting um, ambassador second uh, to the ambassador, uh, he had a high position, and he worked out a deal where nothing would happen to Milchan. Um, and that's pretty much the story of his life. The, uh, the U.S. government keeps turning uh, a blind eye to what he does and what uh, the um, uh, Israeli government's been doing in terms of spying in the U.S. The reason I brought it up with uh, uh, in the Nation article was the fact that here you have Julian Assange, who's uh, facing a lifetime in prison for basically leaking information that showed how the U.S. was uh, illegally killing people uh, in uh, uh, in Afghanistan, Iraq, and so forth. And and uh, you know there was nothing that uh, uh, nobody was coming to his defense in terms of the U.S. government. But when it came to uh, Milchan and his basically admitted uh, uh, espionage, uh, they turned a blind eye to it. So uh, those are the things that I wrote about in this book is how uh, these Israeli espionage operations in the United States have been going on for years. 
and nothing is ever done about them, and there is virtually nothing ever done in the U.S. media about them. Well, and you're very specific, and you involve uh, a lot of people well known here, including a, a, a former Congresswoman Jane Harman, um, Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, who's uh, running for the Senate now, and so forth, and uh, Congressman Howard Berman. So these names pop up and uh, talk about the influence. But what, what's so interesting about it, we learn about uh, Anna Milchin really not from the American media. Uh, we learn about it because of, of the trial of Netanyahu in Israel. And and so this is interesting because uh, to the credit, and in your book you do give credit to uh, prosecutors in, in Israel who have the temerity to go after you know uh, the, the prime minister and uh and and they confront him and they bring this up and milchin ends up being one of their witnesses right, right? he's the key witness on one of the uh one of the three key charges against uh, netanyahu uh, well, he supplied the trial. Pain, we should say and he supplied jewelry according to this trial and then he testified about whether this is bribery and and so forth i mean so it's an interesting case where somehow, uh, if not for the Israeli judicial system, which, by the way, is under attack now in Israel, you know, by Netanyahu, uh, but if not for their system, we in the United States would not have learned how this all happened. Right. right. Yeah. As I mentioned that uh, Milton felt very confident that uh, he spent most of his life living in California, uh, working in Hollywood as a, as a producer very successful producer, and he, he didn't really have any worries about the FBI knocking on his door. They never have. He's done all these things. He's admitted to doing these things, and uh, uh, because the U.S. never wants to create a, uh, an issue involving uh, arresting an, uh, you know, a top Israeli, um, he's gotten away with it. What he didn't uh, anticipate was that the Israelis would come knocking at his door. Um, it, this all started with uh, with his uh, uh, espionage, basically. What happened was uh, he had always had this desire in him to tell people that he was this big Israeli spy. Um, but, you know, he felt he'd get in trouble with it if he said it in the United States publicly. So he, um, he went to uh, Israel and they had him on a television show in Israel that was broadcast only in Israel and it was in Hebrew. He figured nobody's going to be watching it in the U.S., so he uh, he talked about his uh, uh, time in Af South Africa as uh, you know the arms dealer for the uh, racist government down there and the propagandist for the apartheid government, and then he uh, he talked about his uh, 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 time as a espionage agent in the U.S., a uh, uh, nuclear espionage agent for uh, for Israel. And it got out to uh, including the, the the transfer of the Krytons, the illegal uh, blasting caps or triggers for the nuclear weapons. So um, somehow somebody in the State Department happened to see it or hear it or learn about it, and they took away his ten-year visa. He had a ten-year visa that was annually renewed. So all of a sudden he was in a panic because, I mean, that's where he makes his livelihood. It was in California. It's where he's lived most of his... Uh, Quite a livelihood. By, you estimate he's worth about $4 billion, right? Yeah, it's, four, it's over $4 billion uh, is his wealth, enormous wealth. Yet he couldn't, he couldn't afford to uh, give any money to his assistant, uh, his front man, who was facing 105 years in prison. Uh, he never gave nor him any money pay, for his... Uh, nor did he, according to your book, pay taxes in the United States or Israel or uh, or manage to avoid... Well, that's what came out in the trial, yeah. yeah. But just to, to bring this to present day, so he goes to Israel, he, he talks about his activities uh, as a basically as a spy for Israel in the United States, nuclear spy, and... Um, and so somebody at the State Department hears that they take away his uh, his tenure. By, by the way, just to be a footnote, what what, what and the uh, acquisition of triggers to expand the nuclear explosion. This is not small fry stuff, right? 
Um, no, these are the these are the these are the uh, Krytons are, are the the trigger for a nuclear weapon. I mean, it it it's what you want to use to make the uh, H bomb or the A bomb, whatever you have, go bang. It's what we used on our on the bombs we used over in uh, in Japan and, and so forth. So these are critical, and they're very difficult to get and very difficult to make, and that's why. Uh, the Israelis used uh, uh, Milchin to use his front company to secretly and illegally acquire these Krytons, and there were almost a thousand of them, um, and sent them to Israel. So this came out during the uh, during the broadcast. They took his clearance or his uh, uh, U.S. ten-year visa away, and, and so Milchin panicked, and he went to Netanyahu, and he says, "You got to get." Uh, do something to get my clearance back, or sorry, my uh, my um, uh, visa back. And uh, Netanyahu agreed to help him. He basically went to uh, the uh, U.S. ambassador, and then he went to the Secretary of State John Kerry, and they managed to get uh, uh, Netanyahu. After a number of tries, managed to get uh, Milchin's visa restored. Uh, but then uh, Netanyahu wanted some repayment, uh, according to the indictment uh, in Israel. Uh, and so uh, Milton began giving him all kinds of gifts. It totaled a quarter of a million dollars worth of gifts, including $40,000 bracelet for uh, Netanyahu's wife and uh, cases and cases of uh, Dom Pernier uh, pink uh, champagne and uh, expensive uh, Cuban cigars, but, and but but the the uh, champagne, according to your book, was three hundred dollars a bottle or something. Or yeah, three fifty or something like that. Yeah, so uh, um, very expensive. And that is and interesting. It, the Cuban cigar. We still have uh, embargo and uh, encirclement of Cuba. Somehow, uh, these cigars still get sold to rich people. <laughs> right. These Cohibas were particularly sought after by Netanyahu. He dipped oh, right. the cohiba in a in a drink. What uh, um, uh, the orange flavored uh, cognac? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot the name of that, but um, yeah, he's very specific. Matter of fact, when Milton, I think, tried to give him a, a cheaper uh, uh, cigar one time or a cheaper uh, box of Cuban cigars, he got very angry. Uh, Netanyahu got very angry. And uh, so from then on, he, he kept giving him the uh, very expensive uh, cohibas or whatever it was he was giving, uh, giving him from the uh, uh, Cuban cigars. So, so that was, uh, you know, that was going on. Milton uh, didn't give much thought to it. Uh, he was very unhappy. He, he kept doing it. Uh, and, and Netanyahu kept asking him for all these things. And Milton kept giving it to him. And then the uh, the Israeli uh, uh, police basically discovered it, and they they were going to charge. Uh, they they originally were going to charge Milchin as a co-conspirator, and then they agreed to have Milchin testify against uh, Netanyahu um, instead of uh, being charged. And that's what happened uh, basically in the past few weeks. And that's why I wrote about the the story and, and the, uh, well, I wrote about it in my book. And then I, I also wrote about it in the nation article. 